everybody, I'm Jordan Rolfes from Beagle Rampa Productions, and we are still in the midst of our Halloween celebration, and for me, the two most perfect things you could have for Halloween are Tim Burton and Batman. I remember seeing the original Batman movie in the drive-in theater when I was just a couple of months old back in 1989, and the film left such an epic impression on me. I love the amazing performances of Jack Nicholson, Ken Basinger, Michael Keaton, and Jack Palance is in the film, and so is Billy D. Williams and Robert Wall. It is just such an absolutely amazing and A-list cast that does an amazing job with the acting and performances. And of course, Tim Burton's direction, the beautiful blend of gothic and art deco styles, is absolutely incredible. I love pretty much everything about this movie. For me, it's filmmaking at its most perfect point. I absolutely adore this film, and of course there are imperfections and gaffes within it, and to me, that just sort of makes the film all the much better, because the little imperfections kind of make it sweet and endearing. This film is one of the greatest ever made, in my opinion, and it puts Tim Burton, in my point of view, as one of the greatest directors that ever lived. So, I didn't actually discover that they made video games based off of the film until I was a freshman in high school, and by that point, yeah, the world, um, kind of got to me there. I realized that the relationship between film and video games uh, wasn't too good. Typically, the video games based off of films uh, were complete garbage, for lack of a better term, and typically the films based off of video games probably shouldn't have even existed. The media is, or, media, media, yeah, the singular is medium and the plural is media, but it feels wrong to me. But anyway, the media are so different that I don't know if video games really translate that beautifully into film, but... Be that as it may, when I saw this for the NES, I had to wonder, okay, is this going to be any good? So I was delightfully surprised when I popped this puppy in my NES. Everything about this game is pretty much spot on. I love the intense platforming action, the crazy combat. You have to really know what you're doing in order to pull this game off. I beaten it probably six billion times, an exact number, mind you, and I still m get tripped up and messed up a little bit sometimes. I've seen the game over screen, even though I've beaten this game so many times. It's just that difficult. It's that game that you keep throwing the controller at the screen, but you want to go ahead and pick that puppy right back up and go right back into it. It's that good. The platforming action just feels so perfect and right about it. And... I love the music, oh my gosh, the music by Naoki Kaidaka is absolutely fabulous. You literally feel like it's a straight up rock and roll band playing the music in this game. And this game actually has a bit of a cyber element, so adding in to the goth deco style of Tim Burton, we have a bit of a cyber goth sort of feel to this game as well. So. Are there any criticisms of this? A lot of people say this is one of the best NES games, and some people put it in their best ever made list, so what could possibly be wrong with this game? Well, the start and select buttons are swapped, but I mean, any dimwit should be able to get over that hurdle easily enough. But a more glaring issue with this game is... It's almost like the makers did not see the movie. Throughout so much of the game, you think, huh, I don't remember this from the film. Definitely don't remember that guy from the film. Yeah, and oh yeah, this definitely wasn't in it, so... And there is a reason why this game really has nothing to do with the film. When Sunsoft was developing this game, they were actually envisioning it to be, well, just a totally different Batman adventure. They didn't realize that the movie was coming out, but the movie came out in, I think, June of 1989, and this game came out in December, so they decided, okay, we better go ahead and add in some cutscenes from the movie, so you get a bunch of random cutscenes that really feel out of place from where they were in the film, 
and uh, they went ahead and changed up the first and last levels to make it look a little bit closer to the Tim Burton film, but of course, still adding in that cyber goth deco element, which again, just makes it all the much better, I think. So, yeah, this, ver this version of Batman the Video Game, based off of Batman the Film, really solid, one of the best ever made, kind of like the film, but again, it doesn't really have anything to do with the film at all. However, a little bit later, Sunsoft released some other versions of Batman the Video Game, so we're going to take a look at these right now. We're going to wonder, are these any good? Any game involving me is good. Or are they related to the film at all? Does one preclude the other? You're go you guys are going to find out right now on our Beagle Rampant Halloween Productions Festival. <laughs> As you guys can see, we're um, doing the studio renovation from um, where I usually record these videos, and you might hear a little bit more of my neighborhood sounds, and actually, right as I went to press the record button, a drug bust is literally happening in my neighborhood. I mentioned before, I don't live in a good neighborhood, so the drug dogs are barking and all like that, so... Yeah, so please just go ahead and try to forgive it. I'll try not to let it trip me up. It's a little bit breaking of the concentration there, but yeah, that's the neighborhood I live in. Maybe maybe we should get Batman to go ahead and help us out in this neighborhood. Yeah, that'd be cool. But anyway, going on to the Game Boy version of Batman the Video Game. The Game Boy version tends to follow the film a lot better than the NES version, and of course, all of these other versions were released quite a bit after the NES version, which originally was never supposed to be based off of the film anyway. But the Game Boy version has all of these wonderful cutscenes that actually give it more of that retro Batman feel. Batman always has this sort of like retro, almost campy feel, which, granted, was not Tim Burton's initial vision for the film, but this uh, definitely doesn't feel like it's violating the film in any sort of way. Overall, this game is more of an action platformer sort of experience. Batman uses a wide variety of guns to go ahead and get through all of the levels. Typically, all of the power-ups are good except for the one with the letter S. S stands for Sucky in this game, so you're going to want to avoid the power-up with the letter S because I just don't understand what its actual use or function is. The first level of the game is stopping Jack Napier at the Axis Chemical Plants, and once again, there's some really good platforming and some fun action sequences you can do, and again, the gameplay feels really right and natural, but I will say, the game isn't as perfect as the NES version because Batman is maybe just a little too loosey-goosey to perform all of these really pinpoint platforming activities that they expect you to do. Yeah, Blackman's just a little bit too... <laughs> to make this an actual appropriate experience for him. After you stop Jack Napier in the Axis Chemical Plant, we are then taken to the Flugelheim Museum, which of course is a play on words of the Guggenheim Museum from the film. And before I jump into that, Let's just remember in the actual film how Batman came in and stopped the Joker and his men from improving all of the paintings. You can totally see the cable supporting Batman. You can totally see that. Mm. It's just classic. I love it. It just feels so right, and it feels like it just speaks to you, you know? Mm. 
great film, but you'll notice that in the Game Boy level here, Flugelheim is not a correct spelling from what they had in the film. The film actually had two different spellings of the museum, and the Game Boy version of this did not use either of them. And in the Game Boy version, we can definitely see this is one of those museums that exists just to troll the patrons with a lot of random death traps and random cliffs in the middle of your galleries. It just feels like, you know, that museum that's out to get you. Of course, I've been to my fair share of museums throughout the world, and I don't think I actually ran into one like this, so yeah. Maybe I guess a museum that's out to troll its patrons isn't an actual thing. Who knew? And after you go ahead and beat the Flugelheim Museum level, you're treated to a nice cutscene of Batman in the Batmobile! And obviously that leads to the Batwing level. Okay. The Batwing level of this game is insanely difficult. I don't know why anyone would want to go out to the Joker's 200th anniversary celebration with the skies like this. I would think I would be getting ready to get killed, and when I play the actual level as Batman, I do get killed. I get killed a lot. This is so insanely difficult. I mean, newsflash, Sunsoft, the vehicle levels in a video game are supposed to be gimmies. I'm not supposed to have to work for my victory at a vehicle level here. Once I finally get through this insane Batwing level, we're then taken to the Cathedral level, and again, it's kind of the same normal stuff we have been seeing throughout much of the game, but the second stage of the Cathedral level was actually a scrolling level, and wow, this is really difficult. Batman isn't exactly quick enough in this game, and he's, again, a little too... <laughs> to make this platforming all that easy to accomplish. I die quite a bit on this level as well, but once I get the wave beam... Huh, the wave beam. I borrowed that from Samus. I am able to go ahead and actually beat the level with only severe difficulty, and uh, that actually made the battle with the Joker all the much harder, I thought, because I kept missing him. He was certainly easier than he was in the NES version. He didn't have as many attacks, and his attacks didn't do as much damage as they did in the NES version, but still, I couldn't really get any good hits in him, and it took me a couple tries to actually do the Joker in, but we got there, and again, he would have been a, quite a bit easier if I had a more normal weapon, and the final cutscene refers to that weird and mysterious laughter, which always confused me, and still kind of confuses me to the day. I know they refer to it as the Joker's last laugh, but... Yeah, it's just, it's that weird part of the movie. I also really love the cutscene right before you get to the cathedral level where the Joker just says, ha 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 ha, and then the screen is filled with ha 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 ha's. Oh my gosh, that is good stuff, let me tell ya. Up next we have the Sega Genesis version, and right here in the United States, when you look at the back of the cover here, you'll notice that these images are from the NES version. This is a thing specifically for the Genesis version released in the United States. Um, abroad in Japan and in other regions, the Genesis is actually called the Mega Drive, and they go ahead and actually put images from the Mega Drive game on the back of their box, probably because that's a smart thing to do, I guess. Overall, the Sega Genesis version follows the film beautifully. The NES version did mention Vicky Vale, but of course, it's the NES version, so she didn't really do anything, just a brief little mention at the beginning of the game. And the Sega Genesis version mentions her as well, and we will see her again a little bit later on in the game, something the NES version neglected to do, that and, you know, put actual scenes from the movie in the game. And at the beginning of the Genesis version, they actually refer to crime boss Carl Grissom. And I gotta do some straight talk with you guys here. This is one of those games from Sunsoft that has limited continues, 
but it doesn't tell you that you have limited continues, and I've beaten this game on the up and up, so, you know, I'm good for it, man, I'm good for it. But, yeah, I wanted, for recording the footage and everything on the gameplay here, I wanted to have unlimited continues, you know, just so I can take down the details, blah, 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 production excuses. Um, the cheat code that I thought was Unlimited Continues was actually Unlimited Lives. So you'll see kind of some sloppy gameplay here because I think I'm invincible and I am. So yeah, not too honorable here, but I'm on the up and up and I did beat this game straight up legit my first time around. Overall, the Batman game for the Sega Genesis feels very much like a side-scrolling brawler, as opposed to the more action-platforming-based titles on the Game Boy and the NES. Most of the people who designed the NES version also designed the Game Boy version, and again, Naoki Kaidaka still does the music on the Sega Genesis version, but ultimately, it is pretty much a different development team. And interestingly enough, this game actually feels a little bit closer to the film. How about that? Overall, the level structure is still basically the same as what we've seen in the Game Boy version, but I gotta say, I love the cutscene right after the Flugelheim Museum level, where Batman is taking Vicky Vale away from the museum. You can honestly hear in your mind Jack Nicholson saying, Where does he get those wonderful toys? Oh, I just love it. It just makes you feel all of dim feels, man. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I realize this whole video is pretty much me just gushing about Batman. And there are worse things you could do with your life. But I will have to say, for the Sega Genesis version, and while I did mention that this game follows the film beautifully, there is a lack of cutscenes. That one I just mentioned was pretty much the only one that you actually see, but it's okay because the plot is introduced at the beginning of the game, so you can read through pretty much the whole plot of the film, and they nail it beautifully at that opening title crawl there, but... I maybe would have liked to have seen some more cutscenes. Again, we have vehicle levels. The Genesis version actually has the Batmobile, and I read somewhere that if you stay to the left, you won't get hit at all, and that is totally wrong. As you can see, I try staying to the left, and I get hit a whole bunch of times, so I don't know what to tell you there. That's not a correctness that the internet says. You're gonna have to legitimately play those levels, I guess. And once again, the cathedral levels feature a lot of insane and crazy platforming things that maybe this Batman isn't necessarily too capable of doing. He feels a little more solid than the Game Boy version, but yeah, it's still not why as beautiful as the platforming in the NES version, which ironically didn't go this sort of route. I mean, that would have been interesting if the NES version had cliffs and stuff. I think that would have been a more suitable sort of thing, and then have, like, the hazards that the NES version had for the Game Boy and Genesis versions, but... What do I know? Once you finally get to the Joker in this game, you'll realize he's the easiest incarnation of all of the Jokers. It doesn't take that much to actually take him down, so... Yeah, that's pretty good. So, I mentioned that the NES version of Batman the video game was one of the greatest ever made. I mentioned that I really enjoyed the Game Boy version. And the Sega Genesis version beautifully follows the film, and I really enjoyed that title too. So, which one did I not enjoy here? That would be Batman the Video Game for the PC Engine. This version never came out for the United States Turbo Graphics Systems, and if you don't know what a PC Engine or a Turbo Graphics is, go ahead and watch my unboxing video of a PC Engine, and when I bring this not good game into my home. And I really am a little bit not honest when I call this game not good. I really mean that this game is an abhorrent fiasco. Really, the best thing I can liken this to is eating a bag of stale potato chips. 
you know, you find a bag of potato chips in the back of your cupboard and you think, oh, it's only a couple of months expired, I should be fine eating all of this, right? So you eat a couple and, no, they're stale. You eat a few more, no, they're not getting fresher, they're still very much stale. So you eat some more, and you eat some more. And by the time you get to the end of the bag, ooh, I've come this far, but my stomach is starting to hurt. You eat a few more, and you finish the bag, and now you're in the bathroom throwing up all night, and you're angry at yourself for doing that to yourself. You knew that the bag of potato chips was stale. You knew that what you were doing was a definite wrong thing there, but you went ahead and you did it anyway. And that is exactly the feeling I have when I play Batman the video game on the PC engine. The level structure starts with the streets of Gotham City, and your basic objective is to go ahead and pick up all of the chemicals that the Joker has left throughout the city. And there's 12 levels of this, and they all feel exactly the same, except of course for the crazy traffic level where you can't even predict whether or not the vehicles are actually coming towards you. It's sort of just a random guessing game. I'm Batman. I'm better than traffic signals. And the combat, if I can use that term, it's really more you throw your battering at the villains and then run into them and they fly off of the screen and then five seconds later they respawn to attack you and you are way slower and way underpowered to actually take on these low-level goons here. It's absolute insanity. Another fun little feature they have in this game is the grapple points. In in the Sega Genesis version, you had some degree of control over when you could use your grapple point, and when I say some degree of control, I meant you controlled it! That's not what we get for the PC Engine rendition of this game. It's basically just you go on a random triangle and you're transported to another random triangle. Your only recourse is to memorize, rememberize, you rememberize which triangle took you to which other triangle. It could have been an actually interesting puzzle solving dimension. But they didn't go that route because they didn't color code it or mark the shapes, even if they were different shapes. That could have been an interesting puzzle solving dimension. And again, this game could maybe have felt like Bomberman, and again, I have my criticisms with Bomberman too, because the, there were so many levels with Bomberman and they just never feel all that different from each other. We have that sort of thing, but more so on Batman the video game for the PC Engine here. It just doesn't feel very fresh. It never feels fresh. It's... you collect these canisters of the chemical gas, and then you see a cutscene, and I'll hand him this little bone here. These cutscenes look amazing, but the problem is, the first cutscene you see is only a couple of frames. By having their first cutscene only last a few frames, you're led into this sort of sense of, okay, I guess the cutscenes are really going to be this short, and you have to go through another 12 levels at the Flugelheim Museum. And again, the gameplay doesn't get any fresher. It's the stale bag of potato chips. The potato chips are not going to taste better. They just aren't. And this game, the gameplay, just does not get any better. Ultimately, for the second level, the Flugelheim Museum, you have to go around and clean off all of the paintings, which is a cute enough dimension, I guess, but why is Batman doing this? I mean, Batman is not an art conservator, he's not an art expert, and I'm sure that just rubbing a cloth on the paintings isn't enough to actually fix any damage that the Joker and his men did to them. In fact, I'm almost positive that would probably hurt it a little bit. I don't know what chemical Batman's rubbing on these paintings. It could literally be anything. He could be causing some pretty epic damage here. 
After the Flugelheim Museum level, we get to the Axis Chemical Plant, and one of the few things this game has in common with the NES version is the fact that the Axis Chemical levels in this game take place sort of later on in the film when Batman goes ahead and destroys it. And again, you lay down explosives at a spot marked with the letter X. It would have been cool if they had, like, the Batmobile in this game to do all of this, because that was what it was in the film. Yeah, a Batmobile level actually getting some speed. Batman feels like he's 90 years old. He's always so much slower than all of these other bad guys. You are so ridiculously underpowered to take on anything in this game. After the Axis Chemical levels, we go on to the actual parade where Batman has to go and snip the balloons. Again, I mean, what can I say? There's nothing special here. And after you suffer through all of that, you are treated to the final stage where all of a sudden you have to fight bosses. We didn't fight any boss at all in this game. There hasn't been any element of actual honest-to-goodness combat here. So, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to fight any of this. I wasn't prepared for any of this. All of my power-ups don't work. And again, another thing that I do kind of like about this game is the password system, okay? Passwords. I love passwords. I love being able to continue my game. That's always a good thing, I think. But ultimately, with this project, it doesn't remember any of your power-ups, so there's really no point in it. Oh, and the password they give you for the cathedral level is completely useless. It's an error. And the cathedral fight never really seems to end. It's one henchman after another after another, and to be honest, I couldn't really beat it, and I didn't really want to beat it. I mean, how many stale potato chips do I have to eat before I literally throw up all of my bowels? So I went ahead and hopped on the YouTube there and looked up the ending, and luckily the YouTuber The Mean Arena went ahead and gave us the scoop on how the game ends, and it's the final shot from the film. And then a credit roll. Ultimately, the PC Engine version is a stale bag of potato chips that never gets any fresher and you should be mad at yourself for thinking it would get better. I know I'm mad at myself for thinking that that game would ever get better. It never did. But ultimately, all of the other versions here... I don't know where my Game Boy... Where did my Game Boy version go? All the other versions here are really, really good, and they follow the film a lot more beautifully than the NES version does, and okay, yeah, the PC Engine version follows the film more than the NES version, but I gotta say, it doesn't take much to follow the film more than the NES version did, because the NES version was never really supposed to be based off of the film. That just sort of happened. You know how it is. But overall, let me know down in the comments section what you thought of this video and what you think of all of the different versions of Batman the Video Game. Did I miss something with the PC Engine version? Did I overlook its intense, beautiful, haunting mysticism? Oh, <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. I mean... Garbage is garbage, man, but maybe it isn't garbage. Let me know down in the comments section below if you know something I don't. Maybe it isn't garbage. Just maybe. There used to be a time when console games were made for each one of the major theatrical releases. We've gotten away from that nowadays. And nowadays, basically, if there was going to be a video game based off of a film, it would usually be some sort of smaller mobile application that they could update or take away at a moment's notice. I love my fans. You guys are the best. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. You're the best fans in the world. Thank you so much for taking part and sharing these memories with me and for putting up with my fanboying about Batman. Oh, that's good stuff. I'm Jordan Rolfes from Beagle Rampa Productions, and I am off to check the mail to see if my invitation to Tim Burton's Halloween party is there. I will catch you guys later.